life, wisdom. If there were really a monster in your closet and I knew about it but didn't tell you, I would be remiss in my responsibility as your friend. But if I knew that your closet was perfectly safe and I fictitiously claimed that there was a monster in your closet anyway, I would be being a complete dick. I would be causing you unnecessary discomfort and misery over something that's a complete pretense. But there are enough real issues in this world, social injustices, corporate abuses, and other problems, that we don't need to worry about these hypothetical pretenses, these hypothetical world-ending scenarios, or make-believe weapons of mass destruction. In this video, I want to point out that there are a lot of people in this world who are trying to scare the hell out of us, either to control us, to capture our attention, or even to sell us something. Our mass media is chock full of fear-driven advertisements, sensationalized news programs, and alarmist documentaries that are 100% dedicated to making us be afraid. This is a type of psychological terrorism that our society is constantly and continually being bombarded by. And if you don't immediately know what I'm talking about, then I hope that by the end of this video, I'll be able to make that point abundantly clear. Despite really horrible living conditions, there has never been a political protest in North Korea. In North Korea, if you are accused of political dissension, the police state will take you, your spouse, your children, and your parents and put you all into slave labor camps, where you will be forced to endure hard labor until you die. So literally, the three generations of your family are all doomed if you speak out against your government. And this is just one way that fear can be used to control an entire population. It should be pretty obvious that a person who's scared is pretty easy to control. Armed robbers, kidnappers, and rapists are largely only able to commit their crimes because of their victim's fear. Extortion of money through blackmail is also really only possible because of the fear of the person being blackmailed. Scared people make the ultimate sheeple because what do scared people do? They run away, they hide, they do what they're told, they cower in a corner, they're too stressed out, overwhelmed by their own anxiety, and introverted by their own fear to look outside of themselves at all. When a person is truly scared, they aren't proactive, they don't protest, they don't take responsibility for their community or their society at large. They lock themselves behind closed doors and they hide and just hope that things will get better. There are many different motives for controlling people through fear. Fear can be used by a government to subdue its population because when a person becomes truly scared, they will not protest or fight back. On a political level, fear can be used to manufacture the consent necessary to strip a population of its rights and freedoms. After all, it was a fear of terrorism that allowed for the formation of Homeland Security, the TSA, the passing of the Patriot Act, and that justified the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Some people use fear simply to capture your attention and increase their ratings. We see this all the time in the mass media and especially in mainstream news programs where the mentality is that if you present something frightening enough, people just can't help but watch your programming. So the news is covered with stories about rape, murder, mayhem, economic unrest, and social turmoil. One only has to watch the news carefully to see that the majority of these stories are in fact designed to make the world seem a lot more dangerous than it really is. Another way people use fear to control other people is to sell them things. And there are plenty of industries that use fear to sell their products. Insurance is a great example. 
as well as car security systems and home security systems, vaccines, and flu shots. And certainly some of these fears are warranted, but I just want to point out that these are examples of fear being used to sell products. And we constantly see commercials telling us that we might have a disease, and to ask our doctor about the latest blockbuster drug to alleviate our fear of the disease that we might not even have. Can you think of some other examples of fear being used to sell a product? And on another level, the mass marketing is telling us that we aren't pretty enough, we're too fat, our boobs aren't big enough, our car is not expensive enough, and that if we don't buy this fat burning pill or this lipstick or these trendy fashions, that we're likely to become a social outcast or even worse, die alone. It's a fear of social rejection that primarily drives the cosmetic industry, the plastic surgery industry, the weight loss industry, and even the fashion industry. But if you are scared or you have anxiety, then the pharmaceutical industry would be happy to sell you an anti-anxiety drug like Xanax. And this brings up an interesting point, which is that the mental health industry really is primarily driven by fear. Parents only medicate their children because they're scared there might be something wrong with them. People only ask their doctor about the latest drug because they're scared they might have a mental illness. And involuntary institutionalization only occurs because someone is scared that that person might hurt themselves or someone else, even though that person hasn't yet hurt themselves or someone else or committed any crime. Now, it's very true that there are plenty of things in this world which are downright scary. But oftentimes we're bombarded by messages that we should be afraid of things that just haven't happened yet, that hypothetically could happen, but that are not happening in the present. Recently, I was reading an alternative media source and I saw an article about the 10 ways that science could potentially destroy the world. And it got to talking about some pretty absurd things like self-replicating gray goop and artificial intelligence. And while these are the fears of science fiction, it's important to recognize a fear that's based on something that is truly happening in the present moment and a fear that's based on a completely hypothetical situation. Because it's not enough for us to just be afraid of all of the really scary things in our present, it almost seems like the mass media wants us to fear the future, too. Like they want us to fear the myriad of possibilities that could be the end of the world. So we constantly see documentaries on the Discovery Channel or the History Channel about 2012, the doomsday prophecy of Nostradamus, how the world will end, life after people, and natural disasters. But why is the History Channel showing documentaries about the way that the world could end? And then there's Animal Planet documentaries, when sharks attack, when pets attack, because it's not just enough for us to be afraid of the present and the future, but we should really fear our pets, too. Additionally, it's pretty obvious that religions have also used fear to win converts and exert social control. Fire, brimstone, hell, eternal damnation and torment is the promised punishment from a supposedly all-loving God. But that just doesn't make sense, at least not to me. Not only do we have people trying to scare the hell out of us, but now we also have people who are trying to scare the idea of hell into us, too. It often amazes me that people in the alternative media or in the truth movement use fear to try and wake people up. When we know that most scared people are actually going to become introverted, hounded by anxiety, and actually less proactive in their community. The government knows that scared people will sit idly by while their civil rights are stripped away. The robber knows that his victim will be paralyzed by fear and will likely just hand over his wallet or whatever else. The mass media knows that scared people will sit around and watch their stupid television programs. The rapist knows that out of fear, his victim will give up the sanctity of their body. 
so why the heck would we try to wake people up by scaring the piss out of them? It just doesn't make sense. I would say that any individual or organization who seems dedicated to instilling you with fear is really not interested in your personal freedom or your ability to contribute to and change the world and certainly not your personal happiness. It's the person who educates you, who makes you more effective, who empowers you with information to help you improve your life and give you avenues to help improve your community that really has your best interests at heart. And my main point in this video is this. If someone is trying to scare you or make you feel uncomfortable in your own skin or make you dread the future or just in general be afraid of other people, you need to realize what they're doing. They're just trying to scare you. They're just trying to make you afraid. And you need to question their motivations for trying to instill that fear in you. Maybe they just want your money or your silent consent, or maybe they just want your viewership. But it's unlikely that they want you to be happy, productive, or socially active. And that's actually the topic of a future video. Things that people try to scare you with that actually aren't real. Because there are plenty of them out there. And in another video, we're going to talk about man-made global warming. Is it real or is it just a scare tactic? What are the motivations behind global warming? Now, I'll be honest. I was a little scared about coming right out and saying some of the things I said in this video. But then I realized that if I was too scared to say these things, I would be playing right into the hands of those people who are trying to scare me. And that's kind of the whole point of this video. So these are my thoughts about people scaring us, and I'm interested to know what you think. Is it possible to wake someone up by scaring the hell out of them? Or do you just end up scaring them into a deeper sleep? Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know. I hope that you will like this video and know that we actually do put these videos on our Facebook page and we would really appreciate it if you would friend us on Facebook and then like the video on Facebook or share it with your friends. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you so much for watching. To find out more about how the media uses fear to sell us stuff, check out my video, Happiness and the Story of Stuff. If there's one thing that we should all be afraid of, it's all the junk they're putting in our food. Check out my video, Are Food Chemicals Killing You? And because it just wouldn't be a Psyche Truth video if we didn't offer you some solutions, check out my video, Why You Can't Change. And to see my full list of videos on wellness, nutrition, and happiness, check out the Ultimate Karina playlist. This public service announcement is over. Execute the cameraman.